Okay, I'm going to make a grommet for a halyard block for the Charles W. Morgan. So, when I make a large grommet like this, I've already sized this one pretty much. And basically what happens is I'll lay... A piece of material around the block with its piece of hardware and piece of hardware on to get my size. I'll need enough room for a seizing and right in right about in there. And basically what I'll do is I'll take this, this circumference, which is all the way around, and I'll take this out three times, plus about another quarter to be able to tuck the finish. And um, so then I'll end up, once I have that measurement laid out, and I mark out my distance on here, say this distance here, this is actually a piece for another block, but this distance here, I'll actually take and transfer this measurement to the middle of my piece that's three times the, the length of the strop, and I'll transfer that measurement to the middle of the piece, and I mark it all the way around all three um, strands because I'm gonna be taking and I only need one strand for doing the grommet. So I'll take, break it open, and then I'll pull out my one strand um, all the way around, and then I'll find my mark. You know, um, and you know when I have, when I move, I'll move my marks, like I said, to the middle of the piece, and I'll add. Um, the mark all the way around. I had pink a minute ago. But I'll add my mark all the way around so it's easy to find. And so that way I won't be starting from one end of the work. I'll be starting from the middle. And that'll make a little more sense in just a minute. Line this back up. This is um, this material is Mystic 3 Strand. And it is a material that was made for us by New England Ropes. And the thing that's nice about it is it's a three-strand polyester that if I take and cut off the, the tip end where it's been painted, you can see that white in there. And the white in there is Dyneema in each one of the strands. And that adds a lot of strength that makes this piece of line very low stretch. So the other thing, I hear a lot of people say that it's really hard to make a grommet out of nylon or polyester. So we'll have a rough idea of how long we need a piece to be. We'll measure it up. We'll cut it off. We'll mark. Well, then we'll take before we put the final marks on it. We'll take and we'll coat it with polyurethane. So when we go to unlay it, it'll unlay and be not rock hard, but it'll be stiff. I mean, you see, it's still pretty supple but it'll hold its shape, and you can see all of these picks hold their shape, and I, this is the second time I've unwound this, and, all, and it holds its shape very well, and it lays back together nicely. So we just lay a coat on the outside of the material, um, coat of, in this case, black polyurethane, because that's the color it's going to end up ultimately, and so when I unlay it, you end up with a piece that is um, that you can actually see the inside very well, and all of the picks are very defined, so it's very easy to work with. So, um, so this is a flying block for an upper topsail halyard. Um, I've already sized everything up. There's my big marker. Um, so I'm going to set it aside, and I'm going to start making the grommet. So, when you have a piece of hardware that is made into, you know, as an integral part of the grommet, 
the first thing you really need to do when you're making the grommet after you've taken it apart, after you've taken the three strand apart and laid your piece out, is find one of the ends and stick the hardware on. This is um, a very important step. A lot of people forget. They'll get a grommet halfway made and then have to go back and find their hardware and stick, you know, unlay their grommet and stick their hardware on there. Um, all right. So here's one of my marks right here and right here. These two pink marks, um, most of the stuff that we work on, uh, we mark either bright yellow or bright pink. I uh, really like these. Um, Sharpie uh, water-based paint markers. They're real bright. They write on black very well and you can see them. All right. So this piece of um, stock that I'm working here, it was actually, it was cut um, a little long because we're making several different block straps out of the same piece of three strand. So it's got a few different marks on here. The first mark that I put on was this pink one and it was for a particular block strap that's a slightly little bit smaller than the one I'm making now. So this one's going to be about two picks bigger than the one that the marks are for. So I won't lay the marks exactly together. I can actually move over, you know, two picks and, um, and lay them up there. So that's, that's what I'll do. So I've got my hardware on there. I need to go ahead and bring the other end around and we'll just start by taking and getting them laid up kind of close to where they go. And so I'll lay them on right there. And I'll take my turn around here. Down the way. So this is kind of, you know, this is kind of how the, so the block strap I had been making the marks would go right there, um, and that would just be just a little shy. I'm going to kind of eyeball this a little bit. I'm going to open this up, and I'm going to go out to about here. And that's just going to make it a cut the, the circumference just a couple of inches larger um, because it's just a slightly larger block, and I want a little more room on it. All right, so these are the two marks I'm putting together, if I see those. Um... So, I see all the time, um, there's, a, there's a book about rigging that, you know, they show holding a short, you know, the length of however long your grommet is taking a piece of stock that long that's um, hopefully scrap. I mean, I hate to do it with a brand new piece, but um, they use it, they wind a piece in, and then they wind a piece out to keep the lay in its appropriate pit. So, um, keeping everything where it belongs is very important. But I hate wasting or cutting off another piece of stock that's that long because, you know, you might need that for something else. I hate cutting it, you know, just cutting off and wasting a piece of material. Um, so here's what I'm going to show and how to how to keep it where it belongs and how to lay it up so that it lays up easily and lays up, you know, nice and smooth. Um, you know, I see a lot of people when they make grommets, they twist everything real hard and push it in. And I don't do that because the thing is, is you want at the end of it, you want it to have the same amount of twist that it had when it was made into a piece of rope to start with because that's going to, the more twist you put in it, you're not going to take a whole lot of tensile away from it, tensile strength, but you're going to take some. The more twist on the fiber, the less, the least, you know, it's going to lose a little bit of strength. Not a lot, but you, ultimately, you want it to end up with the same amount of strength as it started with, and the same amount of tension in the leg. And the other thing that's going to, that's going to help is if you really crank it up hard and crank it up hard, and get all kinds of twist in the strands, it's going to cause your grommet to figure eight a little bit. So how I teach people to do grommets when we're working in the shop is there's, you know, this is three strand rope. There's basically, when you lay them together, 
in your first turn, there's two positions. There's this position and there's this position. So this strand that you're going to start winding in here, you need to pick whether you want it to be on this side, which is like a half a pick, or if you want it to be on this side. I moved it over two picks is where I'm starting. If I moved it to here, it would be two and a half picks. If I move it back here, it's just two picks. So this, this is going to lay right in the, in the same. So I have this strand and this strand, or this strand and this strand. So when I lay these two together, when I lay this one around this strand, it's going to lay around the same side, and it's going to leave a hole here. Um, so what I do to kind of keep that in line, and I'm always looking at it, and you'll watch my hands, and I'm always pinching it and pulling it like this. So you want to keep, like I said, you want to keep the tension about the same. One of the tricks that I like is I usually take a spring clamp, and I'll take and I'll clip those two together, just like that. And then it doesn't want to slide around. And that keeps your picks together. And I'll just take, I'm going to move my hook and thimble over here. And I'm just going to, you know, take my um, tail and start walking this around. And this is why I move my marks, I move my flat, you know, the length of my grommet into the middle so I can, you know, lay it right in the middle with the tails running out of either side so I can work right from the middle. I can lay them together so I have to take one leg around this way and then I'll take this leg around that way. I'm not working for one end where I'm taking the same end around three times. And, that's, and that also helps with being able to keep it um, very clean. You can see how this is laying up. And it's just going to lay up very nice. And you see I'm not over twisting this or anything. I'm just putting its natural amount of twist in. And I'm just, I'm just going to basically walk this around. And it doesn't take long and this is a pretty big grommet and I know a lot of people would have trouble because it's a you know it's a large grommet small grommets are a little easier you don't have as many as many picks to run around the, the circle here um, but this one just kind of rolls together and you can see you can go pretty fast and you just ever occasionally you just go and make sure you pinch those two together and as you pinch those together they're gonna lay right up and make a space for your third strand and I always see when people start from one end and work around they're really struggling to get the third strand in to close it at the end and this is a you know this is that's one of the big reasons why I work around the middle and you can see I'm not over twisting this or anything else and I'm laying it right in and it lays right in without any trouble. There's no magic or anything else. There's just basically paying attention to the construction of the rope, how it was made to start with, and that helps a whole lot in the finished project. And when you get down to your hardware, slide the end through the hardware, move your hardware around so it's out of the way. And you can see I'm coming right around and I'm going to come up here to my spring clamp which is holding my picks together. You can see how I'm pinching it. Kind of lay that flat. I'll take this around here. Take this one, drop it in, and you can see 
that there's no question where that one's going to go or how it's going to fit in. It's just going to lock in and go right around where it belongs. And you can see I'm not throwing a whole lot of extra twist in it. I'm just laying it right in. And it's primarily because, you know, I started it, you know, and I kept the picks where they belonged. You can see that I'm not putting a whole bunch of extra twist or anything in. It's just going right down. But you can see if you had to go around three times, it might be a little bit tedious and you might have a hard time keeping the spacing correct all the way around. It does take a little bit of practice, but I mean, as you can see, this rolls right together without any any major major problem. And just you know, like I said, this is. Uh, it's a pretty big grommet, so you got to go around the... got to go around the circle a lot. And I'll go ahead and keep pulling on that. I'm going to stick this through here. I'll just run that up a little bit. Make it easy to come through. Like I said, when you're moving your grommet, when you're moving your thimble and your hook around, just pull the tail through, and then just slide it over top. No big deal. And there are a lot of people that would like you to believe that this is some kind of magic making these grommets, but it basically is pretty simple. And it just takes practice and it just takes doing. Now it looks like I'm laying more twist in here, but I'm not. It's just how I'm flipping it around to kind of get the end finished here real quick. It's um, it's unlaying a little bit, so I'm laying it back up as I as as I'm kind of I'm flipping some twist out of it when I'm pulling it under. Um, so just be careful that you don't let it unlay. Like I said, you just want to keep a right about the same amount of twist that it started with. And you know, I see a lot of times people will get a lot of twist. The whole grommet will figure eight like that if there's too much twist in it. So you just have to kind of you know. Keep those picks in the right spot, and you should never have any trouble. All right, so when you get down here to the, to, you got, you know, you got kind of equal lengths, and, you know, how we finish these is um, um, how I usually do it, and I'll set this over here. Um, is I'll take, and I will bring them up close together. I will take and split these in half right in here with my fingers. And I will kind of get half. I want to make sure that I split that Dyneema in the heart of this. Um, split it out. And that's half. And there's an outside, but this is the outside, and this is the inside. I want to keep those two separate. And I'll bring this right on top of it. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to get an outside and an inside.
And I'm going to take, leave my two outside ones hang. I'm going to take the inside pair um, coming from each side. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to tie my overhand knot. I'm going to pull it down so it sets hard. And I'm going to let those hang. And I'm going to take my two other halves that were the, the top halves. And I'm going to take a fid. And take my fid and I'm going to go over and under. Okay. And I'm going to make sure this lays really nice and flat. And you have to excuse the noise. I do work in a shipyard. And uh, making these videos, we're very cognizant of the fact that we don't want it to take any time out of our day. All of these videos are one take videos. Um, so whatever you get is what you get. So that one goes over, and then it's opposite, does the same thing. It crosses over the top. Twist it up there a little bit. I'll pull it through, flatten it out. Flatten it out. And so that's kind of what we're doing. That, um, that will, basically that's the start. And we're trying just kind of, I don't, you know, some people say you can cut half of the material out immediately and this, that, and the other. I don't like to do that. I'd like to go ahead and just kind of keep it moving. Um, this side, where I have my two that are tied in an overhand knot underneath, um, this is the one that I tucked over the top, and this is the one that's tied underneath. So what I'll do, and this will then bring these two out at the same place, Is I'll put the fit in there, flatten this out, And so if you have something scrunched up like this, and this isn't really any kind of splice, if you have something that doesn't pull through clean, take your fit and your thumb, pull back on it a little bit, and watch over here. So if I pull back on this, I can see this is the part that's moving. I can take and then pull that down so it flattens out. And you see that? Because you, you know, at that point you just need to pull on the one that's not really coming together. All right. So Sometimes you might want to take and kind of fair up a little bit and if you give it a good whack it'll kind of equalize the tent help equalize the tension 
and it'll help you, you know, kind of settle everything in there, fair it up a little bit, and help pull it. And then you can try pulling it down a little more, and that off often does what you need it to do. So, and I'll take my fid, and I'll bring my other knotted half from underneath up. So and you can see in here, in this material particularly, this is, like I said, this is a um, Mystic 3 strand from New England Ropes. And you can see these are polyester, these bigger pieces are, um, and the softer pieces are um, Dyneema. So this is a very strong, very low stretch um, line to use. The nice thing about it is it splices like butter. It's awesome. And this was a line that um, their engineers and I came up with to solve a couple of problems for um, an upcoming rig job that we'll be doing on the Mayflower. We've already done some of it, but we'll be doing a lot more. that these are coming out and they're tucked across over here you can go ahead and um, do my tucks and my taper for this um, it really depends this whole grommet's going to be worm parcel and serve so I'm not um, gonna make like a super art project out of the, the tucks and the taper on this and generally what I try and do is I try and kind of just do, I usually do three tucks um, because, like I said, it, it's going to get covered. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, tuck this ahead once, kind of with everything. And when you lay it out flat like this, you've got to kind of have to tuck it in order and you can't tuck it all at the same time. So you'll have to tuck some through. And I'm just going to pull this out pretty flat. I'll fair it up a little more. And now I'll pull a third of the material, or approximately a third of the material. And, and when I'm splicing this Mystic 3 strand, the material that I generally pull out when I'm doing my tapering is the polyester. I don't, I kind of always try and leave the Dyneema in and it um, just a, you know, it's a stronger fiber so you might as well leave the stronger, stronger fiber in. So that's those. 